Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba boo. Hey everybody, now that we've posted the Music in 1989 video, we're completely finished with the 80s. I thought a fun, quick way to wrap up the 80s would be to give a quick top 5 list of our highest rated albums and video games from 1985 through 1989. A quick note about the scoring. These are just our opinions. I'm sure there are excellent albums and games that we missed. Also, certain people on our team tend to give very high scores to everything, and certain people on our team tend to give lower scores for everything. I'll let you know which people rated which albums or games, so you know specifically who to yell at. But please don't yell at us. We're very emotional people. I need to start this by saying that Ramin and I have been Kate Bush super fans since before Stranger Things. I just need to prove some cred here. <laughs> Ramin and I reviewed Kate Bush's 1989 album, The Central World. This album is mostly known for this woman's work, which is brilliant, but you should also know the title track and Rocket's Tale. The whole album is at least okay though. Even its less interesting tracks still have something noteworthy in them. This album takes a lot of disparate ideas like a Bulgarian woman's chorus and Celtic flutes and cheesy guitar solos and other ideas and pairs them up. Just like two ideas in this song, two other ideas in this song. It helps the whole album feel cohesive and it all provides a little spark of recognition every time one of these sounds reoccurs after you hear it for the first time. It's exciting to see how well she makes these ideas feel cohesive. No, I didn't skip number four. There is no number four. Two albums are tied for third. I reviewed this album all by myself. It's one of my favorites of all time, probably in my top 20. Not all of it holds up anymore, but the album is just so meticulously produced that even at spots where you want to groan a bit, it's still at least interesting. My favorites are the anti-capitalist manifesto had like a hole and the searing something I can never have. Trent Reznor didn't invent a lot of these industrial sounds, but he just did them really, really well. And honestly, the attention to detail in this production makes this album stand out as groundbreaking. Apparently Dolly, Emmylou, and Linda were just hanging out making music together when they decided they should release an album together. Molly and I reviewed Trio together, and it's tied for number three in Remichael's favorite albums of 1985 through 1989, an honor that they have not surpassed since, I'm sure. The album is just good fun, it performed by three of the best singers working in the late 80s. Speaking of excellent collaborations, you gotta check out Paul Simon's Graceland. This is one of Molly's absolute favorites. When she and I reviewed this, her enthusiasm helped push this to number two on our list. This is an essential for a road trip playlist with some excellent musicians blending various styles to make some excellent feel-good music. Pretty Hate Machine is in my top 20 of all time, but Hounds of Love is in my top 10. Ramin and I reviewed this one together and gave it a 93%. Yes, this is the album with Running Up That Hill on it. I hope you're not sick of it. I myself have been skipping all of the TikToks that have it playing because it would make me very sad to be tired of this song. I'm sure some of you have listened to this whole album now too. The first half is radio-friendly pop bangers, and they're all really fun. But then the second half of the album is where Kate's genius really shines through. It's a concept album called The Ninth Wave, about a woman who survives a plane crash, passes out while bobbing in the freezing water that she's in, dies, but is magically and or medically brought back to life after a long stretch of hallucinations, dreams, and out-of-body experiences. The sounds Kate is able to create in this I often talk about a moment in And Dream of Sheep that has one of the most perfect sounds ever created, but I have to talk about Hello Earth. It's a masterpiece of musical storytelling that gives me chills every time. All right, now let's move on to our top five favorite video games from 1985 to 1989. Starting with the controversy right away, send all your hate just to me. Nobody else reviewed this one with me. 
This game is pretty widely hated, but I think that that hate is not well founded. It does do some pretty drastically different things from every other Zelda game, and I get it, change is scary, but to me this game is really fun, and I like the changes. I mean, while we're at it, neither game made this list, but I like Final Fantasy 2 more than Final Fantasy 1. I mean, is there even much you can say about this game? When Erica and I reviewed it, we said plenty. It's available to play on so many devices. If you somehow missed this game, check it out. It's illegal to have not played this game. The less controversial Zelda pick on this list. This is sort of like Super Mario Bros. in that it doesn't really need an explanation. I scored this game all by myself, and I stand by it. It's a classic. Okay, I gotta do the usual thing that everybody does when they talk about this game. This is the US version of Super Mario Bros. 2, based on Doki Doki Panic, which was released in Japan in 1987. Erica and I reviewed this one, and as you can see, it scored very high. Again, this is another how could you possibly have missed this game. What puts this above the original for us is the wider playable cast, the way that changes up strategies and allows for different play styles makes it more enjoyable in our opinion. Plus, it's an easier game, which is always a big plus for me, I'm not a great gamer. Wow, an actual 100%. Don't get used to it. Erica and I reviewed this one as well. This is her all-time favorite game. I personally like Mario 2 a little bit more, but I think that this 100% is not undeserved. We can argue things like, is a perfect game even possible? It's not, but who cares? This is a great game and everyone should try it. And with that, we can close the 80s and move fully into the 90s. What did you think of our lists? Is there anything that you think we got wrong? What would your lists look like? Our 1990 videos are coming out next, but maybe after a short break. What are your favorite movies, TV shows, video games, and albums from the year 1990? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until we see you next, Maintain your groovy selves.